Alien, is a 1979 film written by Dan O'Bannon and directed by Ridley Scott. I'm a pretty big fan of the franchise and I can't wait to dive into this bite-sized retro recap of the first Alien. But first things first, as always, there will be spoilers. The film begins on a ship called the Nostromo, which is on its way back to Earth following some mission they don't really specify. There are seven members of the crew aboard the Nostromo. These members are in a cryosleep during the journey, but the ship's AI, named Mother, wakes them up early following the detection of a distress signal. First, there is Dallas, who is the captain of the ship. Then there's Kane, the XO. Ripley, who ends up being our hero. Ash, the ship's science specialist. Lambert, the navigator. And finally, there are Parker and Brett, engineers on the ship and easily my favorite members of the crew. After the crew is awake, they discuss the signal that was detected by Mother. The company that the Nostromo was working for legally requires that they investigate any distress signals detected. The signal is coming from some small nearby moon. With some disagreement among the crew, the ship ultimately heads towards the moon, as per the contract. Once there, the ship gets into some trouble while landing on the incredibly rocky surface and sustains damage. Parker and Brett, the engineers, begin working to fix the ship. In the meantime, Kane, Lambert, and Dallas decide to leave the ship to investigate the signal. While venturing out into the rocky moon, they discover a massive alien ship. They, for some reason, decide to climb into the ship, where they soon lose contact with the rest of their crew. Ripley remains behind to decipher the signal, and when she finally does, it becomes clear that it was not a distress signal, but rather a warning to stay away. She tries to warn the others, but since they're in that ship, they can't hear her. Aboard the alien ship, the crew that's on foot discovers a massive alien creature inside of a chair, who we learn later in the series is called an engineer. Kane is exploring on his own and he finds this large room chamber thing that's full of egg-like objects. He enters the room, breaking through a layer of mist to closer investigate the eggs. One of the eggs that he's looking at breaks open and a small spider-like creature springs out and latches onto his face and it causes him to fall unconscious. The other two crew members that he was with carry his body back towards the ship. As they approach the ship though, Ripley refuses to let them back on board. Captain Dallas demands that she does but she continues to refuse. She says that letting them in violates the company's quarantine policy. During the argument between Dallas and Ripley, Ash, the science officer, decides to go ahead and open the door anyways without Ripley's consent. This allows the others to come aboard. Ash and Dallas, now that they're on board, investigate the creature closer. Ash uses a handheld laser cutter thing to try and cut one of the creature's arms off, but when its skin is broken, it bleeds this acid. The acid falls onto the ship's floor and begins melting through the hull, causing everyone to try and chase after it to stop it before it reaches the outermost section of the hull. Eventually though, the acid does stop and goes inert, but that's not before it burned through several floors. It isn't long before the ship is up and running again, and while on their way back to Earth, the creature wrapped around Kane comes off on its own. It falls dead to the floor. Kane wakes up, he's a little shaky and doesn't remember everything, but he's seemingly normal in all other ways. He sits at the table with the rest of the crew and begins eating, and everyone's really happy to see him up and moving. Things quickly turn south though when Kane begins coughing and he's choking, uh, eventually falling onto the table facing towards the ceiling. A small creature bursts from his chest, spraying blood everywhere. The creature now sitting in his chest looks around, takes in the world, and then it runs away, disappearing somewhere on the ship. The crew, shocked, begins moving around the ship to try and find this missing creature. They use motion detectors, nets, electric prods, all in an effort to catch it. After one false alarm with the ship's cat, the crew keep looking. Brett is the one who let the cat get past him, so the others send him off to find it again on his own, so they won't keep catching the cat over and over. While he's exploring, though, he's attacked by a now massive alien who pulls him up into the ceiling. He's killed off screen. Figuring that the creature can only use the ship's airlock, Captain Dallas decides to crawl through the ducts with a flamethrower to find it. He's attacked by the full grown alien while in the air ducts, and it kills him in the process. Lambert is freaking out at this point knowing that the alien is picking him off one by one. She wants to escape the ship and get away from the creature. Ripley says that they must continue to hunt the duck the same way that Dallas said they should, since there's not enough room in the escape pods for everyone to escape. With Captain Dallas gone, Ripley is now in charge and she goes to speak with the ship's AI, Mother, where she learns that the science officer, Ash, has been given a secret orders to bring the creature back to the company. Ripley tries to find out from Ash if this is true, but she's attacked by the man. Parker steps in to help Ridley and knocks Ash's head off from his body, revealing that he is in fact an android. The remaining crew speak to the disembodied head of Ash, where he tells them their odds of surviving the creature are next to nothing. They turn him off for good. The last of the Nostromo's crew decide that the best course of action from here is for them to start the ship's self-destruct sequence. 
Lambert and Parker attacked and killed by the alien while getting supplies for the escape, leaving Ripley on her own. Ripley finalizes the self-destruct process. She is attacked as she makes her way to the escape shuttle, but manages to board the vessel. She watches as the Nostromo explodes in the background, believing that she's killed the creature, but in fact she has not. It turns out that the alien creature has climbed onto the shuttle as she was escaping, and now it's aboard that smaller ship. With no other choices, Ripley quietly climbs into a spacesuit and gasses the ship, and opens an airlock in an attempt to suck the alien out. The alien hangs onto the shuttle though and tries to climb back onto the ship using the exhaust port. Ripley acts fast and punches the ship's gas and flames burst out, throwing the creature into space. Finally, with everything done, Ripley leaves a message, she grabs the cat that she rescued earlier, and the two of them lay in the stasis pod and put themselves under. And with that, that wraps up this retro recap of the first Alien film. Overall, this film is still amazing, but you don't really need me to tell you that. I mainly made this recap as an excuse to re-examine this first entry in a now very successful franchise. If for some reason you were the only person out there that's not yet seen this film, I'd strongly recommend it. I give Alien a 2 on the scary meter. While the premise of Alien Parasite picking off an isolated crew is inherently scary, the attacks are fairly mild, most of them happening off camera. I love the movie, but some of the effects in this movie are dated, taking away from the overall spooky atmosphere. As for blood, I give Alien a solid 2. There is some blood here, especially with the chest bursting scene, but overall the attacks happen off screen like I said, which is slightly disappointing, but you know, I get it. The premise is scary, but for most people you're perfectly fine to watch this film, even for those who are easily spooked. Well, I've said my bit, see you next time.